Welcome guys, everything new under the sun here. This is a well pump replacement. Now, I replaced this well about five years ago, uh, the well pump that is, and it died on me. Now these pumps are supposed to last, oh, about eight to ten years. Um, some do last a lot shorter. Um, you know, this is a standard Canadian tire, sort of uh, off the shelf well pump. Might have been a Home Depot one, I forget. Uh, but uh, it died. Uh, it uh, there were sparks flying at the bottom of it. I don't think it was overheating. It was uh, maybe a minor short cycle, which kind of sucks the life out of these things. Um, I think what I got was switch chatter, and I'll, I'll tell you what that is later. But what I'm doing now, I, I had purchased a new switch because I saw the switch, uh, the on-off, the uh, pressure switch, was worn out a bit. It was a little blackened and, and melted the, the two plates that connect together to actually turn on the pump. So I bought a new one thinking that was it, um, but that was not it. Uh, I think the actual motor inside was uh, um, burnt out. I forget uh, what's how you what you call it, but uh, basically, you know, on one side the magnets weren't working there. Not the magnets, but the uh, the windings were burnt, so they weren't turning it. So if if you got it, if you rotated it a bit and, and gave it the power again, it would start up. So I'm actually just uh, taking off the old. Um, pressure switch be uh, sorry the the new one the new one that I put on because I'm gonna save that and use it uh, you know if I have a well switch go out on me again it was about 30 bucks that was the uh, first attempt at fixing it now I do have um, uh, what is called I guess a jet pump it's got two pipes going down uh, into the well there's a closer look although it's kind of blurry I tried to zoom in but that didn't work a uh, well at all um, it's slow motion of the you can see the plates there right in the middle sort of bouncing and then in a second, uh, oh yeah, maybe that was it. They they sparked basically when I, I had the, the slow mo on it, but it wasn't as spectacular in uh, post processing when I looked at it. So you'll notice here uh, the two um, pipes there going down to the well. So I had to have a jet pump, and and that's what I have. I, I and uh, this time I opted to go for a top of the line. Now the name escapes me. I should I should have looked at it, but it's a top of the line pump this time, about twice as expensive as this pump, which is a, a standard Flowtech from Canadian Tire. Uh, about $300 this pump was, and um, <coughs> the new one's $600, but it should last twice or three times as long, according to um, the, the uh, place I got it from. I, I went to um, a well digging company, and they highly recommended um, the one I have in there, and now the new one. And uh, boy, the, the, the name escapes me. Um, anyways, um, so you'll see that there's a filter in between the well pump and the pressure tank. The pressure tank's on the left-hand side, um, where you see the valves there. Um, here you see me uh, taking it out. Um, this is a fancy, fancy new, uh, heavy-duty. This should, thing should last, you know, 15, 20 years, by, by what the guy was telling me. It's got cast iron on the end of it, which the Flowtech does, but it's better quality motor, and this actually has replaceable parts. Um, I, I'm putting in the, the plastic uh, connectors there. Um, I probably should have went with metal, but uh, I've gotten away with using them. So I put some uh, plumber's tape on there, whatever you call it. Um, so anyways, um, uh, I think what was happening was you're not supposed to... I read the manual after the fact, and you're not supposed to have a, a filter in between your well pump and the pressure tank, because what happens uh, is that... Um, you get what's called uh, switch chatter. Um, so pressure builds up behind the uh, the filter because it's it's creating friction on the on the motor on the well pump, and uh, that causes a, a slight peak uh, uh, or uh, you know maximum in pressure. So the well pump turns off for uh, a, you know a split second, um, and then it turns back on again uh, when the water gets its way through the filter, and it keeps doing that. That's called switch chatter. So the the switch is always kind of just chattering and never staying completely on or completely off. And I think that uh, led to it. And that it says specifically in the manual, which I should have read beforehand, uh, not to do that. Um, so here's what I'm priming the pump with these ones. You just pour down until you fill it up with water. Um, this is a Gould uh, water pump. You can see the, see the name on the, on the front of it. So this is a, apparently a good one, like I say. Um, I, at this point, I did not take the filter out of line. I did that after as I was reading the manual um, so that it would not create that chatter. I think that's probably what m most likely led to the um, early demise of my Flowtech well pump. So I lived and learned and that was a, an expensive uh, lesson to learn. Um, read your manual. It, it, it usually helps. 
Um, now I also have a little bit of a short cycle um, due to my pressure tank, which is just an air. It, there's no bladder in there. Um, here I'm trying to fill the uh, the pressure tank with air. It wasn't working for some reason. It wasn't uh, pressurizing. I think my I think my pump. I found later that my pump isn't uh, pressuring past 20 pounds, 20 psi pounds per square inch. So I think that's what uh, I think that's uh, another part of my short cycling. It, it uh, you know, it it does turn off the the well pump, so it's not complete short cycling. Where as soon as you turn on the the tap, um, it uh, the pump comes on. So there's some pressure there. Um, so you got to run the water for you know 20 seconds or something before the well pump comes on. Uh, but it probably sh it probably uh, could uh, be a bit better, a bit longer run time before um, the well pump uh, comes on. Um, so the other half of my project, which I've not done yet, is to put the, the filter on the other side. Currently it's sitting out outside of the system. Um, I've got to do some soldering and got to work with some copper piping on the house side of things so that the, the filter is supposed to go on the house side so it doesn't interfere and, and short cycle and cause that switch chatter and, and prematurely uh, kill your well pump. So like I said, I used the, the plastic fittings here with some plumber's tape. Um, I did have to do a few adjustments after until it stopped dripping. I had uh, a good number of drips. But you just keep tightening along the way. And, if, uh, you know, I've got some snake clamps there. I had to tighten more than once. Uh, but eventually you get it. And so, yeah, I, I tried to repressurize the, the pressure tank there. And like I say, it, uh, like I was saying before, I just wasn't pressurizing. Um, such is life. I left it uh, at about, you know, it was about 20 pounds or something. Probably a little less than that. It probably needs a bit more... Uh, air in it than that, um, but it's fine for now. And I, you know, it, it died one day before we were going to have a whole bunch of family members come over, so I did have to get it done. You can see there with the monkey wrench, I was uh, twisting a little bit tighter. You just kind of um, twist them a little bit tighter if you got some drips in there. Just give it a tiny bit of a turn each time and see if it drips, and then give it a turn again, see if it drips. And uh, what you do is you can dry it off with a rag or something as well um, to see if it is still leaking. Um, and then even uh, if it's still leaking, just give it a week and, and usually sediment fills it up or, or you know, the plastic and, and uh, rubber hose uh, eventually seats itself. So all in all, the uh, uh, process went fairly straightforward. It took me um, basically all morning, probably five hours um, by the time I was done working by myself, uh, you know, fiddly dealing with the with the connectors and this time since I had done it only five years ago I, I had all the parts and I knew the whole process um, so it didn't work out too bad um, so now it works uh, very well no issues um, it's a little bit higher pressure I think the the switch on this one on my old the switch on my old one was um, on at 20 psi off at 40 psi and this one's 30 50 so it's a bit a bit higher pressure overall uh, but it seems to be working and of course these come out of the box with their own uh, pressure switch so that is in there um, now again, like I'm saying, um, I did remove the filter so that the pipe net goes direct from the um, well pump over to the pressure tank with a clear line so it can fill that up when it needs to and it stays on. There's no, no chatter until the pressure gets up there. And so I think uh, the combination of um, much better quality well pump and no filter in between, um, if I don't get 10 years out of this, I will be very, very disappointed. And probably, you know, the, the guy at the um, well drilling, it was more well drilling actually in PEI in Charlottetown here. And they were very helpful and uh, taught me a lot actually just talking to him. Um, but um, he, he would be surprised if I didn't get 15, 20, even longer than that out of this. The um, nice thing about this is that it's got some replaceable parts on it. So they'll actually take it back, service it, and resell it or, or just service it for me. So that, that's a nice thing. So that's what I ended up doing. Um, that is your well pump replacement. Yeah, I guess this wasn't really how to, except that you can watch the, the different processes that you go through. Take the well pump out, and you got snake lamps. You got the you got to get the correct size pipes. I think I have a um, an inch pipe and an inch and a quarter pipe or something like that um, fittings that I need to get. So that was it. Yeah, like I say, six hours, and um, I don't know. In ten years, I'll tell you whether it was a good idea to spend twice as much on a well pump or not. Um, there, I'm just kind of tweaking the fitting. It kept leaking from the top. I think it's nearly sealed up now on its own just from sediment and you know it fills up with rust and, and whatever in the water so kind of self-sealed. Anyways, I'll stop talking guys. Thanks for watching. That was my uh, troubles and tribulations uh, of reinstalling, reinstalling my uh, well pump. 
we'll see you in the next video.